Welcome to our second video in our Getting Started series. In this video, we're gonna build on the tools that you learned in our first video. So if you haven't seen that one yet, I highly suggest you go back and take a look at that one first. Um, what we're gonna do in this video is I'm gonna show you how to import in a DXF file. So an already created file, maybe from a customer, they may want you to cut maybe a sample part of a job. And I'll show you how to go ahead and pull that apart so you can cut a manageable piece of that on your CNC machine. In the end, we should come up with something like this. So let's jump right into the software and I'll show you how to do it. As you'll see, I have a fresh instance of Cut2D Desktop open here. It's important to remember that all the tools that we're gonna look at in Cut2D Desktop are available in Cut2D Pro, VCarve Desktop, VCarve Pro, and Aspire as well. So we're gonna go straight to opening up an existing file, but instead of us choosing to open up a native vectric file, we're gonna go ahead and choose this garden panel dash vectors.dxf file, which has been installed inside of your tutorials folder. I do wanna point out that down here in the bottom right hand corner of your open dialog, there are a lot of other different file formats that we can open directly into our software. So it's just nice to, to know what those are for future reference, okay? So we'll select that and we'll click open. Now, as soon as that opens up, we're going to be showing this warning. And this is just a reminder that because we're using one of our desktop products, then we can't create a toolpath any larger than 25 inches by 25 inches unless we go ahead and use toolpath tiling. If you're interested in knowing more about toolpath tiling, you can take a look at our online help. So I'll click OK. Now, the first thing we need to do when we open up a file like this is to make sure that we check our job setup. Make sure you check it over closely. So first off, it's going to be a single sided job. You'll see our width is in inches, our height is in inches, and our thickness is as well because we have the unit set as inches. If you look at your job, it's hard to believe that this is going to be 2,500 inches across. So I suspect that this actually should be in millimeters. So we're going to go ahead and switch that over to millimeters. And then we're going to need to look at our thickness of our material. It's definitely not going to be 0.75 of a millimeter. So let's go and have a quick look at our thickness of our material that we're going to potentially use to cut this in. And I think it's 11.5 millimeters thick. We will be zeroing off our material surface. And now you want to make sure that you look closely at your XY datum position. When we imported this file in, it's not only set it to the bottom left hand corner, which is perfect for what we want, it's also applied an offset. So it's moved the center of this job to the center of this sheet, which really we don't want that to happen. So we're gonna go ahead and unclick use offset. And that way it's gonna be now positioned to the bottom left hand corner proper like we would like. The modeling resolution is set to standard. Because there isn't any 3D content in here, we don't need any more pixels than a standard resolution job will give us. In our material setup, we're going to choose Canadian Maple, which is perfect, and we'll go ahead and click OK. And now again, we've thrown up that same warning we saw a second ago. This is only because we've switched over to millimeters from inches. So again, this is just a reminder that our toolpath can't be any larger than 625 millimeters by 625 millimeters without tiling. Let's just click OK. Now, the next thing we want to check is the accuracy of our import. So just to be sure that we've done everything correct, I'm just going to go ahead and select this bottom right hand corner panel. We're going to make sure that your software's measurements are correct to what is illustrated here. If you take a look in our bottom right hand corner, you'll see that we've got the width of 550 and a height of 550. So that is correct. So everything is right. The next thing we want to take a look at is our actual layer. So I can look at that either through our layers tab over here or our layers drop down. I'll look at our layers tab for right now. The DXF file already had three layers set up in it. So we've got a layer called zero, which as you can see, because of the turned down piece of paper, it doesn't have any vectors on it, that there isn't any vectors on that particular layer. But on layer one, there is, and on the dimension layers, there are. There's also a color associated with this layer. So we can hide and show the dimensions if we want to. We can hide and show the actual design if we'd like to. And we can go ahead and delete this particular layer here because we don't want it there. So simply right clicking on that layer, going down to delete and say delete this. And we've removed that from our file. So let's go back to our design tab for a moment. Because we're only looking to cut a sample of this, then we're gonna find a small part of this full project that we can use that will fit on our machine without having to do any toolpath tiling. 
And this part right down here is the perfect fit for that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our sheets and we are going to create a brand new sheet. But before we do that, we may as well go ahead and do a little bit of organization here. Let's look at sheet number one and we're going to click on that and right click and go down to rename. And we're going to call that design. It's always good to keep things organized. And then we're going to add a brand new sheet. When we do that, if we zoom out in our 2D view, you're going to see that we have another sheet over here called Sheet 1 now. So let's rename that. Right click on that and we'll rename that to be Sample. And you'll see that our 2D view is updated with that new sheet name. And we're going to want to change the size of this. We don't want it to be this full size here. It needs to fit inside of that 625 millimeter by 625 millimeter dimension that we have that we know that uh, we need to be aware of. So let's just go ahead and edit that and we'll change the size of the sheet to be 600 by 600. The thickness is fine. We're still going to be zeroing off our material surface. Our XY datum is the bottom left hand corner. We're going to use that standard fastest re resolution and our material is actually Canadian maple. So that's okay. We'll just go ahead and click okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to zoom out a little bit so that we can see both of those sheets. And we'll double click on this first sheet. And we'll select the bit that we want to copy onto that smaller sheet. We'll right click on that and we'll say copy to sheet sample. And you'll see when we do that, it's going to copy that onto the sheet sample, but the same distance from the datum or the XY datum here. So you'll see that it's, it's the same distance from this point to here as it is from there to there which we're going to need to rectify. So let's go ahead and double click on the sample sheet. We'll select all those vectors, go back to our design tab. We'll go ahead and use our alignment tool and we'll center that to the middle of our sheet and we'll close this down now. Now just to make our life a little bit easier, and a little bit cleaner to look at, let's go up to our sheets drop down and we're going to hide our design sheet. And then we can go ahead and just press F on our keyboard to focus on that sheet. So now we've done everything that we need to do to go ahead and start creating some tool paths for this job. So let's pop over to our tool paths tab. And as always, we're gonna to wanna to make sure our material setup is correct. So again, this is the setup that we have on our machine. So the thickness of the actual material we'll be cutting into is 11.5, you should always verify that. My XY datum on the machine will be the bottom left hand corner. I'll be zeroing off my material surface. There are no 3D models in my project, so I don't need to worry about this at all. And the rapid Z gaps above my material, the start and home position, and the Z gap above my material is safe and appropriate for my machine. If you like a little bit more information on how to set these up or what these mean, you could refer back to the first getting started video where we talk in depth about those. And those these numbers are safe and appropriate for me, so I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. This is a one tool path job. So we're simply gonna go ahead and select all of these vectors and we're gonna go into our profile tool path. Now with this, we'll start off telling our software the cutting depth. So we're gonna start at zero. We're gonna cut all the way through our material, which is 11.5. We're gonna use a standard end mill for this, but we could go ahead into our tool database and choose a different tool if we'd like to. Just make sure that we have the proper material, the proper machine set up, and also, the, when you pick your tool, make sure that these feeds and speeds are safe and appropriate for your job, the machine you're using, and the material you're cutting into. And that's fine. We're going to go ahead and select that. We're going to cut on the outside of those vectors. We're not going to use ramp and plunge moves, but we will add in some tabs to this tool path. So we'll turn that on. A length of 25 millimeters and a thickness of one millimeter, I think will be perfect for this job. If you happen to be Using a vacuum hold down, then you may or may not want to use tabs. It's totally up to you. But we will go ahead and edit our tabs. Now we could go ahead and get the software to automatically position the tabs where it thinks they should be. But in my case, I'm just going to go ahead right into my 2D view and drop some tabs where I think they should be. So by hovering over one of these lines, I can left click on my mouse and I can drop in a tab. So we're going to drop in a few around here. And I want to position the tabs in the center here so that they're easily removed so that I can get this waste material out of here without having to really work very hard to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and select it there 
that looks good. These are nice flat areas too, which will make it easy to sand. Put two tabs on the center bit. Put two tabs here, a couple tabs there. And I think that's enough tabs to make this uh, safe uh, to cut on my CNC. So let's just go ahead and close this down now. We'll give this toolpath a new name. We'll call this cutout. And we'll calculate that. Now, as always, we should we ask you to go ahead and preview your visible toolpaths. If you see any issues at all, this is where you're going to want to fix it before you save these off and run them on your machine. And I'm really happy with that. You'll see these tabs will hold this piece in place nicely. It'll hold these waste material parts in here so they'll safely stay on the machine. Now we can go ahead and just save off our toolpaths. Let's close down our previous toolpath dialog. Go over to our save toolpaths option here. We're going to make sure that we have the selected toolpath saved. So we're going to choose that and we have this toolpath selected. We'll make sure that we have the proper machine selected and the proper post processor selected. And then we can save that off to our USB key. That's a good file name. We'll just click save and that's it. So we've gone ahead and saved off our G code onto our USB drive. And this is how we're going to get our file over to the ShopBot machine over here. Now, if you're not familiar with your controller software, make sure that you reference your user guide that probably came along with your machine so you know how to use that properly. I already have over here a piece of material that I'm gonna to use to cut out the sample part. It's a piece of plywood, um, and that should be adequate for showing off my customer what the end result of their project is gonna look like. So let's go ahead now and get this G-code into our controller software and get this cutting. Okay, so now that I have the material set up on my machine, I need to go ahead and set my XY datum. Now on this machine, the Y runs this way and the X goes that way. So I've made a little bit of a mark on the top of the material. I'm gonna go ahead and line up my tool with that mark. Now that I've set the X and the Y datum in the proper position, I can go ahead now and zero the Z height of my tool. And for that, I'm gonna use my touch plate. And in the software, I've gone ahead and told that I was gonna be zeroing off the top of my material, not my machine bed. So let's go ahead and do that. Now that I've gone and set my XY datum in the proper position, and I've zeroed my tool off the top of the material, I can go ahead now and start running my program. So that turned out pretty nice in the end. I think it's a great example of uh, what we can do with Cut2D. And I think our customer, once they see this, they can go ahead and improve, approve this and we can head into production of their garden panels. Now that's the last of the videos for our Cut2D users. If you're a VCarve Pro user or desktop user or Aspire user, keep on watching our Getting Started series so you can get a little more insight into how to get started with your software. If you're a Cut2D user and we haven't answered some of your questions, there's a help file and there's also our online tutorials that you can go ahead and watch for some more information on how to get the most out of your software. Well, until next time, I'll see you later.